Hi, my name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops. And today I'm going to show you our traditional lime Grisello Venetian plaster in a tricorn black finish with some variations on the top coats. So let's get our tools, let's get our materials, and let's get started. So the first thing I've done to get ready is I've base coated the surface using our quartz primer. The reason for the quartz primer is it's a lime based plaster. So we have to stay within the, the uh, proprietary system to make sure that we do not have adhesion failure. Quartz primer, interior, exterior, cleans up with soap and water. You can tint it using pigments, never paint. Paint will dilute the product and the product will be worthless. You use pigments because they're highly concentrated and they'll get you to the color you're trying to achieve much quicker. Um, some things about the quartz primer, you're not going to get you're not going to get the tint to black, dark blues, dark reds. You'll get it kind of close, and that way you, it'll give you a nice base if you're doing a black plaster like today when I'm going to use this color called tricorn black. But the first thing I'm going to do is uh, our trowel. Oh, and I rolled this on using a quarter inch nap roller. Since we're going to do Grisello, I always start with a base of Marmarino, which is a lime based plaster. And we're going to need our texture trowel, stainless steel texture trowel, and a spatula. The Marmarino, oh, I'm just going to put on as a tint base. I'm not going to tint it. Marmarino is a lime based plaster, interior, exterior, cleans up with soap and water. It tints with lime compatible pigments, never paint, and not universal pigments because the lime and the plaster can have an adverse reaction to uh, most pigments that are not lime compatible and the color could disappear quickly. So let's just put some Marmarino on. This is our, our bed coat. If that was my ceiling, I'd come across like so. Come down the wall or the corner. It's a very thick plaster and it's great for evening out like uh, imperfections. What I'm going to do is just put it on with some nice simple movement, just enough to give the finish a little interest. And when I do it, the trial is almost flat, it slides off. And then I come back and it's kind of high up on the edge. So it's almost flat up on the edge and you can hear the aggregate in it as it goes across that base. Marmarine, I mean it's the thing about the Grisello, it's a very thin plaster and imperfections will telegraph through so when you do a base of your Marmarino like so it buries all those imperfections that are on the wall and you're going to get that super glossy glassy look that you're looking for. So with this finish, we're going to need this to dry 100% before we move to the Grisello. If you see right here, see these black specks? That's the stainless steel in this trial coming out. So knowing that we're going to be bearing this with or, uh, black Grisello, I'm not too concerned. But that's one of those things I talk about. You got to be very careful of. So if I'm doing a white plaster finish, it'll be the Lexan trial or the plastic trial. Okay. All right, so we're going to let that dry and come back and put some color on there with our Grisello. So we'll let this dry and see you just after a little bit. We're dry, so let's get back to the Grisello. So for the Grisello plaster, our good Venetian plaster trials, the high quality stainless steel Pavan guys, these with our spatula. Okay, high quality stainless steel, they're a little damp because I just rinsed them off. Somebody forgot to clean them up after the last use. Um, but that's it. So Grisello plaster is an interior exterior lime based plaster. Tints with uh, its lime. Cleans up with soap and water. It tints with lime compatible pigments, not paint, not regular universal pigments because the lime in the product can have an adverse reaction to most pigments and it'll destroy it and they could fade out overnight. This color has been tinted to a Sherwin-Williams color called tricorn black. So it's a deep, dark, cool color. So let's put this first coat on. Okay. 
always work wet to dry. So over top of that Mar Marino, it's a nice, smooth, slick base. I'm kind of pulling it tight because you can see the, see the interest of that Mar Marino coming through. That's our foundation that everything else is going to build upon. All right, so smooth. All right, we're going to let that dry 100%, come back and hit it again, see in a little bit. First coat is dry, let's move on to the second coat. We're going to do this the exact same way, 100% coverage, because it's a traditional style of plaster. Now, trying to get a plaster to go this dark, you got to be careful. Sometimes it can take a lot of color in. And, uh, Oops, what am I doing? Got to get away from that. If uh, too much colorant, you got to be careful. Some like you're, it's and even it's not like paint when you go this dark. It's going to have shades of your the true color. The tricorn black is going to be there, but because of the variation in Venetian plaster, the way we do this, you're going to see other things happening. There's going to be a lot going on here, especially with this color. It's going to show a lot of cool stuff but you're going to get shades of what you're looking for. It's not like paint, so it's not going to be a solid uniform color. So, Okay, we'll let that dry, come back to our third or final coat, compress it, and see what we have. Okay, second coat's dry, so I'm going to add a third coat just simply because, well, one is that's the look we're going for for this particular finish. and. Um, and we can compress, get a nice layer, uh, our compression layer. So just again, I'm going to put a little bit more pressure behind it, this time backfilling every little loose area. So yes, I'm putting a little bit more pressure because I'm actually going to be compressing it as I go. And compressing or burning, burnishing is exactly what it is, compressing. We're crushing the plaster, compressing the plaster into each, into itself, so it's gonna become smoother. As it gets smoother, it's gonna reflect more light, and that's where you get that highly reflective look from. So. That's what we're doing. Again, 100% coverage. Okay, let's clean this trowel. And I put it on so tight that I could really just go into it right now and compress. Missing my rag, here we go. Clean this trowel up a little bit. You gotta be real careful with these trowels. They are very sharp on the edges. Now the compression layer, the trowel is almost flat. And I'm going to start with a light pressure. If I get resistance, that means the plaster is not ready. And what I mean by ready, I'm waiting for it to be in about an 85 to 90% dry or humid state. I want a little bit of moisture in there. And that helps it compress. Without the moisture, it won't really compress that well. You can still, well, it, it will compress. It'll get shiny. A lot of times people, if you let it dry overnight, now you can go over top of it to try to burnish it and you might get some out of it but you're actually going to get more damage to it than or cause more damage to it than anything and I'm just using my hand up here to stabilize this easel a little bit it's time for a new one so it's still a couple spots aren't really ready yet so I'm just gonna wait it out it's the waiting game so let's wait this out, come back, see what we have when we're finished here. Okay, so it's completely dried. It's completely burnished. I burnished a little bit more in between. So here it is. Check it out when we bring it to you. That's it. Just straight plaster right there. 
needs probably a couple more, more, few more spots can be burnished up here. There, it's got a little, some haziness here, but no big deal. We'll take care of that. Well, it is a big deal. You don't want to leave a wall like that. So now the next thing to finish this, I'm going to have my same trial, my uh, high quality Venetian trial that we've been using, the green handle, the Pavon, and I'm going to use our Italian polishing wax, which is the interior exterior uh, wax that you can seal with. This is the pearl wax. So it comes in various colors, gold, silver, or it comes in the clear for traditional basic finishes, not ba yeah, traditional basic finishes. And then it comes in gold, silvers, bronzes, coppers, all kinds of stuff. And this is the pearl. And what I've done with the pearl as well is I've added a pinch of our um, violet mica powder, not mica powder, I'm sorry. Um, purple pigment. So, let's see what happens. So look at all that wax. It's kind of catching into all that the texture you don't even know that's there. So this is the pearl wax with purple pigment added to it. And then once it's dry or firm, we can polish it. The biggest thing about wax, be careful. Don't put it on too thick. Too thick, it'll get cloudy and hazy. And then you got a problem. And the only way to really get that off of there is to take your time and go in with a, another trowel and kind of scrape some of it off or an odorless mineral spirit soaked on a rag and kind of buff some of it out. So. That's it. We're going to take our lint free, lint free, color free rag, polish it up. The reason we want lint free is we don't want lint fibers in our wax and we don't want color from the fabric that could possibly be pulled into the, uh, the, the wax could pull the color from your rag and put it in the plaster. So we definitely don't want that. And there we go. That's simple. Let's see what it looks like when the light dances around on it. Yeah, the purple didn't really do much. But look how slick and wet that looks. Isn't that cool? So the wax does several things. It can add a decorative layer to it. Um, and you can layer your waxes. It, it now, it's now stain resistant. So if you have this in a room where somebody might spill something on it, it'll it could stain. Now it won't. It'll just repel itself off. So that's it for this. And it's, as I'm playing with it, it's given me an idea for something kind of fun. At least I think it'll be fun. Basic finish is done. That's our Grisello with the pearl polishing wax with a pinch of violet p pigment into it. But when I was in the back, I forgot that I had some of these really cool black light reflective uh, coatings. And I am like really curious what it's going to look like over this. So I'm going to take some, put it on my trowel, and I'm going to just apply it like a wax. I've only ever used these in my murals, so I'm not 100% sure what it's going to look like on here. But I'm thinking it's going to look pretty interesting. So I'm just going to trial it over. Give it 100% coating. And I'm going to let it dry. And grab a black light and see what happens. See in a little bit. And there's the finished product with the black light on top of the iridescent coating over our black Grisello Venetian plaster. That's pretty cool. That's really cool. I'm digging that a lot. It's got so much dimension to it. It looks like it's all over the place. I could see that in a home theater, nightclub. But, you know, now when I take it away from, from that, out of those lights, you're not going to see anything. I'm trying to get you to see. 
it's still perfectly smooth. <laughs> Super cool. All right. Let's turn the lights back on so you can see what the finished looks like in daylight. Obviously, the lights are back up. Here's what it looks like in the daytime. Okay. Charcoal looking Venetian plaster, some black highlights. Now, the coating took away some of our shine, so it's not quite as shiny. I could probably fix that with some wax if I wanted to make it super shiny again, but you get the idea of how flat, look how flat this is. Okay, there's nothing, there's no texture. And even against this, it pops. So, I mean, I could see that like home theater, game room, nightclub, anywhere you could just, and possibilities are endless. And the neat thing about the coatings, or the iridescent coating, one, it'll seal the plaster like a, seal, like a wax, um, but it's not a wax. So the nice thing is if you want to paint over it, you can just paint over it down the road if you change your mind. You can layer it. These coatings come in a lot of different colors. They're, this is the, the typical here, green, glow in the dark. There's reds, blues, purples, uh, all kinds of stuff, yellows. My God. And it just keeps going and going and going and going. And then you can combine the colors to make new colors. So you, it, the possibility is just endless. You can do whatever you want to do. So I showed you a really cool technique using our, our lime-based Grisello Venetian plaster. And then we showed you what it looked like with the wax, and then we played with it. Super cool, super fun. I want to thank you for watching. My name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland. If you get a chance, go to the website, thefauxschool.com. You can find classes here in the studio. You can find a travel schedule, and you can find information about commissioning me for various projects that you may have, wherever they may be. Again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.